we got a pretty standard Raspberry Pi login screen here. We got our user Pi. We got a little bit more. We got Windows 10 with GPU, Ubuntu desktop VM. What are these? Well, both of these are virtual machines running in Proxmox. And I've configured it so when you log into this account, it takes you straight to the virtual machine. So if we log into Windows 10, should get the virtual machine. There we go. We're connecting to the server in there. Boom, Windows. This video is going to walk through how to set up this thin client login. So when you log into a user on the Raspberry Pi, it jumps to a thin client. You can use this to connect to all of your virtual machines remotely or let the user choose which virtual machine they want to connect to. I know that these little guys are preciously hard to find right now. So I've also got instructions in my blog post, link in the description, for how to do all of this on a standard Debian install if you got an old laptop or an old computer lying around that you want to use it with. So I have a previous video, link up there in the card, where I went through setting up Proxmox for Spife-based thin clients. And this is the same kind of setup. But I'll just go over it real quick again. So the short answer is we need to set up the display on our virtual machine to use Spice as the graphics card. We can optionally add USB devices or sound cards that we can pass through from the virtual machine to the client, which in this case is the Raspberry Pi. We created a user here called VDI user in the PVE realm, so Proxmox manages the password. And this is the user account that we've hard-coded into a, a shell script on the thin client. And we've given that user permission to access VM106's console, so the role of PVE VM user, that gives them enough permissions to access VM106. So I've just finished the Raspberry Pi setup process. I got a brand new Raspberry Pi install, and we're going to configure it with Raspberry Config. So system options, auto login at boot. We need to change auto login at boot to be desktop auto login requiring user to log in. This way, when the thin client comes up, you can select which virtual machine you want to be redirected to. We're going to enable the SSH server. So we'd say yes. And that's it. So we'll let it reboot and we'll come back. So now that we've disabled auto login, when the Pi boots up, we get a screen like this. We've got a drop down box where we can pick Pi or we can type a user in ourselves. And we have to type the password in. So now that we have the SSH server installed and running, I've switched over to SSH because it's a little bit quicker to copy and paste commands. So now we need to install Vert Viewer, which includes the Remote Viewer utility. Boom. So now that that's done, we're going to create the thin client script. And this is similar to the script we created in the last video. But we're going to share this between all the users, so we're going to put it in a common location instead of in the user's home directory. So I'm going to put it in user local bin so everyone can, can access it. So again, like the last video, I'm going to copy and paste the script in and then we're going to walk through it. So we start again with similar stuff. You type in your username and password. So in this case, we're going to take the VM ID as an argument. Since we're using this script for more than one VM, passing in the VM ID is a good way to do it. In this case, I only have one Proxmox host. So we can just put the node here as we normally would, either the DNS name or the name of the node. And then down for proxy, again, we either do the DNS name or the IP address of the node. If you have a cluster, um, you can pick any, any IP address or any node in the cluster. If you have separate servers, then you would have to make these arguments as well so that you're, you can pass in which server you need to connect to. Another little tidbit I did, I changed, since the last version of the script, I changed this curl command to remove the forced proxy. So if you have a cluster, it'll automatically connect to whichever node is currently running the VM instead of potentially proxying it through a different node. Uh, down here for remote viewer, we've switched from using kiosk mode to using full screen mode, and we remove the exec command. And that means the script will continue to run after remote viewer terminates. And the final thing we did is we call kill all x session, or lx session. So lx session is what runs the lxde user session. So killing it will kick us back to the login screen. I know this kind of seems like a hack, but if you actually read through the lxde like code, this is exactly what they do. They send sig term to LX session, and then LX session decides that it must log out.
So this is the script. So we'll save that and we'll make it executable. And now it's there ready for us so we can use it in other places. So now we're going to create a user on the local system for each virtual machine we want to be able to log into. So in this case, I have, I have a couple. So we'll start by adding one for Ubuntu. So we'll call him VDI Ubuntu. And then it asks us for a password. We have to give it a password. We can't leave it blank here. And now here's a, a quick tip. The full name is the name it's going to show in the login manager. So if we call it like Ubuntu Desktop VM, that's what's going to show up in the login manager in the drop down box, the full name. We leave all the rest of these blank. Information is correct. So now we have a new user called VDI Ubuntu, and the login screen is going to show Ubuntu Desktop VM. So we could do another one for Windows too. We're going to name this one Windows and with you. That is correct. So if we want to let users log into one or more of these VMs without a password, we have to do a little bit of a hack. So what you could just do is tell the users to log in with a password, and then only users who know the password can log into specific VMs. But if we have a VM we'd like everyone to be able to access, we can do a little management with PAM, which is what does Linux authentication, to let it authenticate users without a password. You're not going to want to do this for any user that has pseudo permissions, because that's quite dangerous. But in this case, our VDI Windows and VDI Ubuntu users don't really have any permissions at all. So we're going to do this. So we're going to edit the file etc.pam.dlightdm. And this file essentially defines the rules that PAM follows when it decides if it should accept or reject the login request from LightDM. And LightDM is what manages the login screen. So we're going to add a line right here at the top that says off sufficient and then pam succeed if .so and then user in group no password login. So that means that if the user is part of the group no password login, then it'll let them log in through LightDM but not through SSH or through other things without using their password. So let's save that. And now we'll create that group. And we're going to add our Ubuntu one to it, but not our Windows one. So people have to type the password in to get to Windows, but not to get to Ubuntu. There we go. So this next bit is a little bit dangerous. Basically what happens when you log in to an LXDE window session is LXDE calls a script called the auto start script for the system. And this launches things like the taskbar at the top, the desktop, desktop icons, etc. And then after that it calls the auto start file for the user, which includes any programs the user wants to start automatically. And so for users that are thin client users that the user launches into a remote session, we don't want to include any of this desktop junk. We just want to go straight into the thin client. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the system auto start file and move it to the user auto start file. So the user pi is going to have their auto start file launch the basic desktop environment like we would expect. And any other user is just going to get dropped into a, a blank desktop background. They're going to have a picture and that's it. So so first we need to move the auto start file to make a copy of it. So we're going to move the file is called etsy xcg lx session lxde pi auto start. And we're going to move it to that same file with an in.back. And that way it's there for safekeeping. Then we're going to create a blank file to replace the auto start file just so lxd doesn't freak out. So just using touch will create the file. And now we're going to create that own, our own file in our own user directory that copies what this file used to be. So first we have to create the folder it goes in, and then we can copy it. And so essentially what this is going to do is when the user logs in as pi, it's going to launch all of the desktop programs that are part of LXDE that were supposed to be launched already by the system. So that includes LX Panel, which is the menu bar at the top, uh, PC Man FM, which is the desktop icons, that kind of stuff. 
Now I've logged in over SSH as the Ubuntu user. And this is a user we want to drop into a thin client. We don't want to drop him into a normal desktop session. So we need to create an auto start file for this user that instead of launching LX panel and PC Man FM and that good stuff, it launches into our thin client script. So here's what we're going to do. So first we have to create the folder that it goes in. And then we create the file. And then I'll show you what goes in there. So it's uh, in the user's home folder, it's under .config, LX session, LXDE, PI, auto start. And it's pretty simple. I'm just going to have one line. So this line is not a shell script. It does not get evaluated as such. So at means a file to execute. And we want to execute bash, which is the command line interpreter. And then we're going to give it the path to our shell script, which is user local bin thin client. And then the argument is the VM ID. In this case, 106 is Ubuntu. So we'll save that. And so now you have to do that for every single VM you want to be able to access from the system. So I'll do this again for Windows. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Now I should be able to log out here and log in to the Ubuntu. It should just connect. Click log out. So we got user pi who needs the password. Or we could pick Ubuntu desktop VM. Try that one. This should work without a password. We should be able to hit enter. And it should log us right in. There it goes. Connecting to graphic server. So we're in full screen mode instead of kiosk mode. Which means the user has access to a USB pass through and things like that. So here we are. We're in Ubuntu. So now what happens when we exit? So we go up here and we exit the thin client. It should drop us back in the login screen. Oh, the color bars are my uh, video capture device. Yep, so here we go. Back in the login screen. So in the first video, we had the Raspberry Pi boot up directly into a single thin client session. This meant that there was a one-to-one -one relationship between the Raspberry Pi and the virtual machine. With this video, we can now choose between a few virtual machines we've pre-configured on the Pi. The ultimate goal, though, is to get a setup more like a commercial VDI solution, where the user can pick the type of virtual machine they like, and when they log into it, we spin up a new clone of the virtual machine just for the user. But we're not quite there yet. This is a, a step in the right direction though, and it gets us closer to the ideal open source virtual desktop infrastructure. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.